Hi, it's Jory with Taitland Studio. In today's episode, we're going to be going over making a rustic king-sized headboard. Now, I start off by just doing the border, and I'm just cutting them to the length. And uh, after I do that, I do take it over to the jointer, and I'm just uh, running both the face and the edge. And uh, I've got a few different boards, so it is a king-size bed, so the horizontal pieces will be longer than the uh, vertical pieces, of course. I'm just going over and getting a reference on both the edge and the face there. And once I'm done that, I just cut them to the overall width, which was just a little shy of three inches width. Now, when I did uh, cut them, they did bow a bit, so I took them back to the jointer and just uh, made them flat again. And after the jointer, I'm just running them through the planer and uh, just taking out the curve on the other end and making it nice and straight. Once it's done on the jointer, I did notice that there were some voids in it, so I'm just uh, taping off the area. I'm uh, mixing some epoxy here, and uh, I'm just adding a little bit of black tint, and once I uh, mix that up nice and good, I just pour it into the holes. I'm just letting it seep in, and that epoxy takes a little while to seep in, but yeah, I fill them nice and good. And uh, when it cures, I take it back to the uh, planer, and just take off that edge and I make sure to run all the other boards as well so it's the same thickness. And here I'm just squaring up the edges and uh, after I've squared up those edges, the joinery method I will be using is dowels. Now I have this jig here and I'm just, just adjusting it and setting it up here. It is a little bit of a tedious process to get it set right but I set it and uh, once I get that set and I test it, I'm going over to the actual pieces themselves and I'm just joining the edges and putting in the dowels and making sure they fit. Now once I finish the border, I have to do that center piece uh, just with the uh, backer, I guess it's called, where your head goes up against and your pillows go. And I cut all those boards and I'm just using a four quarter material. I cut them all and I'm just kind of arranging what's visually the most appealing. And after I've done that, I run the uh, one side through the jointer here, and then I do the other side. Now my plan is to, because that overall board width is wider than my jointer planer capability, I do end up gluing two of the pieces together. And after I glue those two pieces together, I uh, end up just basically running them back through the jointer later on. My time running them through here, it is a little bit of a time consuming process, but once I do that, I just cut them to the final width on the table saw and I just trim a little bit off the edge because I want that as big as possible because I don't want our pillows to fall out down the back. and. Just set those boards out the way that I arranged them and uh, just end up gluing up the edges, put lots of glue in there and brush it out so it's a nice even connection. Put them in and tons of clamps I'm using. You probably heard the joke of there's not enough clamps for a woodworker and this seems to be the case on this piece but uh, yeah, just cleaning them off with some baby wipes and once it's uh, sort of dried there I uh, just take it out of the clamps and uh, you can see those two pieces there that are glued together on each side. And again, I just run them through the jointer and just flatten that edge. And after they've been flattened, I run them through the planer and make them nice and flat. And then I do take them back to the clamps and uh, just basically clamp them up, glue, and then here I'm taking them out of the clamps. Now I did end up uh, now working over to the uh, border or the frame, the headboard frame and I take that center piece and I'm just measuring out the width of that so it'll fit in nice and snug and I'm just marking it here as you can see. And then I just cut it and uh, then I work, move on to sanding that border. I don't know if you want to call it the frame, I'm not really sure, but just going through the sand grits. Start off with uh, 60, then work up to 120. 
And finally here, I uh, do the glue up. Now this is a bit of a tedious glue up, adding in those dowels and just going back and forth and all around. And you'll see that I did actually struggle a little bit with this glue up. Um, because it's such a large headboard, being that it's uh, king sized, I um, had to, my, my, I didn't have long enough clamps. So I used some clamps and just sort of doubled them up there and I sort of attach them and got lots of glue there to make sure it's a nice tight bond. And once I uh, do that, I'm just gonna check square and <laughs> here it's kind of funny. I, I tighten it up a little bit. I gotta use a little clamp there in the middle and then once I do that, I'm checking the diagonal to make sure it's the same. And it's like, oh no, I over tightened it. So then I go back to the other side, I tighten it up there. And again, I end up over tightening it again and measuring it. I'm trying to get the tape measure and it's like, no, nope, I screwed up again, checking square and it's, it's not square. So then <laughs> measuring it, checking it back and forth. And, and I take off the clams and I go back to the other side. I'm like, okay, all right. I'm gonna be a little bit more careful here. Check square, take my time. You know, I was kind of worried about that glue drying quickly. Um, and then I finally f do the uh, squaring, check it again, double check, triple check, check the angle and it looks like I finally got it here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, finally just take it out of the clamps and it's all said and done. And then I can just go into the sanding process on the outside. So again, I'm just going through the grits. I start off at 60 grit and then, or maybe it was 80 grit and work up to 120, 150. And I'm doing a nice round over on the edge. I like to do a 1 8 round over on modern furniture. I find it gives it the uh, the nicest feel and look well, you know, still having that those nice crisp lines. And I do end up um, going over with sandpaper on those edges because I find that round over bit sometimes does leave a bit of an impression on the wood. So just sanding all those edges, just breaking it up and um, yeah. Just uh, going back and forth now the other side and taking the sander out again and moving that overarm dust collector in the way. That is one of the disadvantages of this uh, this setup is having that workbench kind of connected to the table saws. I kind of fight in there and my hose is getting wrapped around. But finally I go back to the, I don't know, the, the back panel piece and I'm just going through the sandpaper or the sand grits and that as well. and. Just taking it down and then finally here I am just measuring out the uh, pocket holes because that's how I'm attaching that. And um, now here what I use is a steel wool and vinegar mixture on the birch and what that does is that there's a chemical reaction and it, aid, it gives an aging look on the wood and you can see that just slowly graying a little bit and that's what gives it that rustic appeal. A lot of times people want that gray in uh, the modern design that's really popular right now but I find some of the grays can just be too gray and there's no warmth in it but adding that uh, steel wool and vinegar really gives it a nice finish and then finally here I'm or the stain and here I'm moving to the finish and I'm using some Osmo hard wax oil and uh, I'm using satin and this is just the first coat the first coat always does look like it's kind of a mat, but as you add more, it brings up the sheen a bit. And here I'm just uh, doing the little uh, connection points for the uh, 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 the metal frame on the bottom. And I just cut those to pieces and then sanding them and uh, doing a round over on it. And then once that's all done, I just putting in the grooves so where that uh, frame will attach to. I've got a uh, spiral bit here that's just cutting those grooves out. Now I have done the measurement of the spacing and so I just line that up. Now it is a universal size and then to attach it, just using pocket holes there. And uh, yeah, I didn't catch the frame being finished, but uh, I did uh, have the headboard connected there or the base and here you can see the final result. It's got a nice brown well, it's got some brown into it, but it's still grayish and it's got a really nice warmth. And there it is, just connected right to the bottom. And uh, yeah, there's with the pillows on and it looks great. I'm really happy with it. It looks rustic, but it's really modern. 
and it's got a nice sheen to it. It's got a nice glow to it. And uh, that's pretty much the end of the episode. But you guys, uh, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. And uh, keep your eyes posted for more videos.